Hi everyone, welcome to this Java tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at return statements and how to use them in a computer program. Return statements are common to many computer programming languages, and not just Java. Okay, so here is today's scenario. and Take a moment to read it if you need to pause your video. And pause your video now. Okay, to solve this problem, let's just take a moment to think ahead. We know that we're going to loop 10 times. This will represent each of the 10 dives. Inside each loop, we're going to set the air level to 100 and the fish court to 0. We're then going to start another loop which will allow the diver to try to catch fish while the air level is greater than 20. So you can see we've got a loop here inside our main loop. Okay. If we catch a fish, we add it to the basket. And we also need to find a way to reduce the air level by some random amount. If we don't do that, we're going to be trapped in this inner loop forever, an infinite loop. When the inner loop finishes, it means we ran out of air, and that's the end of the current dive. So if that was our first dive, we've still got nine more dives to go. So at the end of the dive, display the number of fish caught, and then we're going to go back to the main loop and do the other nine dives and eventually we will finish the program. So just thinking ahead, this is an algorithm that will help me think about how to solve the problem. Let's get coding. So I've already created a new project called the dive project and I've got in my source folder my main.java file. Here it is. To get started, I'm going to call a function called dive trip. And let's start to design the dive trip function. Now we know that at the start um, we're going to do 10 dive trips. Or we're going to do 10 dives on the trip. Let's, let's consider it like that. So I'm going to use for loop to simulate that scenario. If you haven't yet mastered the syntax of a for loop, keep practicing. If you're a beginner, keep using it, and it will just become second nature to you. Now, at the beginning of each trip, um, we're going to set our air supply to be 100. Sorry, the, at the beginning of each dive, each of the 10 dives, we start again with an air supply of 100 and a fish cord of 0. Now, these two variables are going to be used throughout the dive trip function, so I'm going to declare them at the top of the function. So, air supply is going to be an integer, and fish cord is also going to be an integer. Okay, so I've declared my variables. Now then, let's imagine i is 0, which means we're on the first dive. We're going to attempt to catch fish. while air supply is greater than 20. So while air supply is greater than 20, we're going to catch fish. <laughs> so to do this, I'm going to call a function called catch fish. This function, the purpose of this function, is to help me simulate how to catch fish. Okay, So I'm just going to come out of the dive trip function for a moment. 
and I'm going to start thinking about the design of my catch fish function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, this is just purely my imagination at work here, I'm going to create a Boolean variable um, called caught. I'm also going to use a random number generator, so I need an integer variable to help me process that. I'm going to create a random number. In some range, doesn't really matter what the range is. And I'm going to use a bit of logic here to determine if the random number is even or odd. So if my random number modulus 2 is the same as 0, I'm going to say that caught is true. We caught a fish. Else, we didn't catch a fish. Now, you might want to do a bit of research if you're not sure what the modulus operator does in Java. But this line of code here will determine if my integer, rand, is an even number or an odd number. Okay? Now, I've got a problem here. In my dive trip function, I called catch fish to help me catch a fish. But I need to know the result. I need to know, did I catch a fish or not? So, this function, the purpose of this function is to return... the value stored in the caught variable. Okay? I need to return that back to the main program here, not the main program, my dive trip function. Now, Java isn't happy because void methods cannot return a value. So, method is just another word for function. So, this is a void function. Void functions cannot return values. But I want to return a boolean value. So I'm going to change void to boolean. Awesome. Okay. Java is happy now. If I was returning rand, rand is an int, so I'd have to change that to be int. So this keyword here tells us what data type the function will return. And if it's not returning anything, we just write void. Okay, so that's how Java manages return statements. Now, back in my dive trip function, this function call is returning some data. I need to grab it. Okay, so if it returns true, when that's finished, I will see this actually in the program. Okay, If this function call returns false, this is what's going to happen. Right? That's really what's happening in the background. When it returns a value, I'm going to grab it. Now, of course, this is the first time in my program that Java has seen this variable. So I also need to declare it. Okay? Interestingly, if I declare this variable inside the while loop, the while loop is the only part of the program that can see this variable. Later on in my program, I might want to use this variable again inside this function. So let's make it a local variable. So I'll declare it at the top of the function. We don't need to declare it again. Okay, these are all local variables, by the way, in the dive trip function. Okay, so now that we've called a function, it's returned some data that we've grabbed. Let's now look at that data. If attempt is the same as true, it means we caught a fish. So let's update the fish caught variable. I'm just going to add one to fish caught. 
So while the air supply is greater than 20, we're just going to keep trying to catch fish. And every time we are successful, we're going to add it to the basket. Okay? Now, in this loop, of course, we need to reduce the air supply by a random amount. So before we leave the tutorial, I'm just going to deal with that issue and then you can move on to today's challenge. So air supply will we'll look at the current value of air supply and we will take away a random amount. What do you reckon? Um, somewhere between one and five? Something like that. Okay. Again, if you're still not sure how to create a random number in a certain range, keep thinking about it and keep practicing, and, and that will get easier. So that's all for today's um, tutorial. Continue the activity and see if you can figure out um, the solutions that, uh, sorry, the problems that are presented to you.